Welcome to worship this morning. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Alleluia. We thank you for keeping up with your financial offerings. If you're able to, would you please drop off cans of ravioli and other meats with pull tabs, tuna, mac and cheese, cans of soup, vegetables, pasta, or spaghetti sauce to feed the hungry folks who come to our doors. If you are interested in Zoom worship on Wednesday evenings, I have sent out, or will send out again, an email inviting you to, the, to log in. And if you enter those codes, you can get on and join us. You can join by computer or smartphone or landline phone, and we just hear your voice, not you see your face. I'm starting this on Wednesday, May 6th at 7 o'clock. Online blessings of the animals will be held on Saturday, May 16th at 2 o'clock. So please send me pictures of your beautiful past to Lori Fuller at Lori at FullerFamily.ws to be included in the service. We hope you've been enjoying these online services. The council discussed whether to continue live streaming church once we start in-person services again. We would really like your feedback, so please take a moment to complete the survey that was included in last week's newsletter to help us decide. At the April Council meeting, it was determined that the first possible day for public worship is June 7, but that's only tentative and will depend on the status of the virus in our area and on our governor's decisions. We will talk about it again at our May Council meeting, May 17. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Christ, a shepherd and gate. We rather chart our own course. 
than be shepherded like a sheep. We would rather find our own way than do you at the way. We would rather be shepherds than sheep who are vulnerable and exposed. Forgive us when we bleat our resistance as you guide us to higher pastures. Be our gate, our way to safe havens, where we can dwell with you secure. Amen. The one who anoint our head with oil, the one who feed us while our enemies look on, the one who delivered us from evil, invite us to dwell in the heart of the Lord forever. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd, who leads us to still waters. The Lord is our shepherd, who restores our soul. The Lord is our shepherd, whose goodness and mercy shall be with us all the days of our lives. Open our lips, O shepherd, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. We often swim troubled waters, O shepherd, yet you promise to lead us to still waters. We are often wearied and depleted by the challenges life presents, yet you promise to renew and restore our soul. You promise that though we walk haunted by the shadow of death, you comfort and guide us. We have gathered to worship, to give thanks, to learn how to trust that come what may, we will dwell with you forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Act. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and calming life, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. Awe come upon everyone, because many wonders and signs are be done by the apostles. All who believed were together, and all had things in common. They would sell their production and goods, and distribute the pretty to all, as any who had any need. Day by day, they spent as much time together in the temple, they broke the bread at home, 
and ate with their food and glad and generous heart, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run away because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I was once at the home of a shepherd friend during lambing season. Often, shepherds help with the birth, catching the lambs as they are released from the womb. And I have the privilege of wiping the fluid off a newborn lamb while my friend caught the other twin as it emerged. My friend knew everything about her sheep. She knew their names, their quirky behaviors, and their tendencies to wander from the herd. 
In this gospel text from John, we have two images. Jesus as the gate to the sheepfold who protects the sheep and the sheep who listen only to Jesus' voice. My friend really understands these images. Other than this one night, I have had no other face-to-face encounters with sheep. I can only try to guess what it is like to be a literal shepherd. Though as a pastor, it is assumed I am the shepherd of the flock, a group of people with names, quirky behaviors, and occasional tendencies to wander away from the herd. In ancient times, the shepherd would sit in the opening in the sheepfold to keep the sheep in and predators out. When Jesus calls himself the gate, he means he protects us sheep from harm, from those things that would prevent us from following him with our whole heart, from those things that steal our heart and soul away from Jesus. So what kinds of things does Jesus the gate protect us from? How might we be stolen away from Jesus? If we were together, I would ask you to list your ideas while I wrote them down. But instead, I have made a list for us. You can add your own items on the chat if you feel so inclined. Some of the things that steal us away are busyness. We claim we don't have time to spend with Jesus. Doubt believing we aren't good enough for Jesus to love just the way we are. Addictions to alcohol and drugs, to food, to work, to video games, to spending money, to saving money. And broken relationships with family, with church, with God. The first half of the Gospel of John tells the stories of how various people have developed relationships with Jesus. In all of them, one way or another, he talked to them about eternal life, abundant life. At a wedding feast, Jesus turns water into wine, into lots of very fine wine. The wine steward comments that the groom's family has saved the best for last. There is an abundance of this wine, more than enough for everyone there. Jesus told Nicodemus that he could be born again or born from above. He can have a new type of relationship with God, not based on the rules he knows so well, but on the love he feels in his heart. Over time, Nicodemus keeps in touch with Jesus, and he is actually one of those who asks Pilate for his body. He has a new way of believing in God. Jesus travels through Samaria, and has a conversation with a woman at a well. He helps her understand that by listening to him and believing in him, she could have a life filled with living water. Eternal life flows from Jesus like an overflowing well. I believe her heart, which has been broken over and over again, is healing because of this living water. A large crowd of people are gathered listening to Jesus. Everyone is getting hungry, including the disciples. They want to send the crowd home so they can get something to eat. But Jesus tells the disciples to feed the people. A boy offers his lunch, some bread and some fish. Somehow there is enough to feed everyone and have leftovers. With Jesus, there is an abundance. There is a man who is born blind who cries out to Jesus for help. Jesus gives him his sight, and what's amazing to me is he also gives him the ability to know what he is seeing. The crowd, the Pharisees, even his parents, don't want to believe what Jesus has done. But for this man, he will never have to beg again, and now he follows Jesus. For years, it seems, Jesus has been friends with Martha and Mary and Lazarus. It's my belief that Lazarus is the beloved disciple that Jesus speaks to from the cross. So when Lazarus dies, Jesus cries tears of real grief. He prays, and Lazarus is restored to life. Lazarus now knows what death is life and how precious life is. 
So in the Gospel of John, eternal life is a relationship with God. That means that there is an abundance of the most important stuff in life. When we have a trusting relationship with God, we allow Jesus to keep us from those things that steal us away from God. It is as if the water of our baptism washes away again and again The busyness, the fear that God doesn't love us, the addictions, and the brokenness of life and human relationships. Our relationship with God is based on God loving us first and wanting a relationship with us. God became human so we could hear that message with Jesus' voice. Jesus continually calls to us, tries to gather us once more into the sheepfold where we will be safe from those things that try to steal us away from him. We are human, so we will return again and again to these life-stealing things. And again and again, Jesus will call to us and try to close the gate to protect us from them. So let's just try to follow the shepherd because by following him, there is abundant life to be found. Amen. by the promise of hope, of healing, and restoration. We join the people of God in all time and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest the crop for local farmers market, and for those who are involved with agriculture of any kind. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nation to return to your path for righteousness and inspire our leader to walk in your way so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainable. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comforting God, you care yet tenderly. We pray for those who walk through the dark valley, overshadowed by anxiety, overwhelmed with suffering. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally, those suffering from COVID-19, those risking their lives caring for the victim, and those who are on our prayer list. The Allen family, the Baker family, Alice, Marion, Judy, Margaret, Sharon, Cole Jackson family, Helen, Edwin and Harriet, Jean, Judy, Joy, the Gruber family, Shirley, Chris, Carol, Jim, Joan, Bill and Jan, Jeremy, Mary, and Dolores. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. 
You have called them by name and guide them into your side in death. Thank you for their life, the faithful witness, especially those who have to come to COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place for all who are put into your internal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered in one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that I did it in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is written, just as he said, go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>